all, I'm Kath. This is Made by Kath Craft, and thank you so much for joining me for this video, which is going to be all about my sewing plans for this autumn. So the weather's starting to get a little bit cooler here, and I've been working on a list of sewing projects I'd like to be getting busy with over the next few weeks, and I'm looking forward to sharing them all with you. I've got some new fabrics I want to sew with, and I've got a new pattern too, so I'll be talking all about all of those and what my plans are for each of the new fabrics. But first, before I start talking all about those plans, I'll kick this video off as ever with what I'm wearing today. And today I'm wearing a dress I haven't had on for quite a while, um, but I always enjoy getting this one out. I made this dress using a bit of a classic Tilly and the Buttons pattern. You may recognise it from the bodice of the dress. It is this pattern here, the Coco dress and top pattern. It's one of Tilly and the Buttons' older patterns, and I sort of forget about this dress sometimes. It's only Coco I've made, actually. But yesterday on the school one, one of the other mums um, on the school one also does a bit of sewing, and she was wearing a really lovely Coco dress. We had a little bit of a chat about it. And seeing her wear her version inspired me to get mine out today. And actually, I find it perfect for this sort of in-between weather where it's not quite wintry and cold, but it's not sort of summery and warm anymore. So yeah, I think the cocoa is perfect for the fall season. But yeah, I'll show you the line drawings on the cocoa. It's probably one you're familiar with, but um, always nice to revisit, I think. Um, yeah, so you can make it as a top or a dress. It's got a boat neck and it's got this A-line flare out in the dress version, or you can make this sort of quite long top version and you can add a few optional patch pockets on. And it's got a sort of sleeve that finishes just um, around your elbow, I think, or maybe slightly longer, and I've made mine a little bit shorter, but yeah, slightly shorter sleeve, not a full length sleeve. I mean, it's quite a simple pattern. It comes together really nicely. It says on the pattern it's for confident beginners, but I think that Tilly the Buttons instructions are so clear and hold your hand so well that you could probably tackle this even as a less confident beginner. You could give it a go. So yeah, it's a really nice pattern. I've only made this one version. And I actually chose a fabric for this version that isn't recommended in the pattern because the pattern recommends medium weight knit fabrics with little stretch, like a ponty or double knit or an interlock. And I'm not always a big fan of that sort of fabric, particularly ponty, I find it often has quite high polyester content, which I don't find that comfy to wear. So I thought I'd give the cocoa a go in a cotton jersey, which is a fabric I do really like to wear. And actually it's worked out okay, but the only thing I found, found that didn't go quite so well was finishing the neckline. And when I sew this um, neckline, it sort of stretched slightly. So you could probably see a little bit, there's a little bit more sort of stretching out than there should be around the neckline. I think if you sewed it with a more heavier weight, low stretch knit fabric, it'll be fine because it would have a bit more stability, so it wouldn't stretch, but I probably should have finished the neckline in a different way, given I was using a cotton jersey, but you live and you learn. So I think if I made a cocoa again in cotton jersey, I'd probably yeah choose a different way of finishing the neckline. But this version is fine. Um, generally, I have my hair here, so it kind of covers it a bit, and it's not too noticeable, I don't think. And I still really enjoy wearing this version. I think the fabric is quite cute. It's got this sort of Breton stripe, this sort of black stripe on the white, and then it's got these little hearts um, along it as well, which I think is quite sweet. It makes you feel like a little bit. It's got a bit of a French vibe somehow. This dress. Um, so yeah, I always enjoy getting it out. Um, and yeah, that's what I'm wearing today. I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on. I've just got it on with a pair of leggings, nice and comfy and casual and relaxed. And um, yeah, you can't beat a jersey dress, can you, for comfort? So that is what I'm wearing today, but I'm gonna move on now to share with you what I've got planned for sewing this autumn. So the first sewing project that I wanted to talk about, I've got planned for this autumn is one I'm really excited about. I'm really looking forward to getting started on this one because I've got a new fabric to sew with, but also a new pattern. And I bought the pattern last week. I've been eyeing up for a few weeks. I really, really like the look of it. So I can't wait to put this fabric and this pattern together and see how I get on. So I'll share the fabric first, and then I'll talk about the pattern I'd like to match this fabric with. And this is the fabric here. So this is a viscose chalet fabric, and it's one of the Minerva exclusive range of viscose chalet fabrics. You may well be aware Minerva now have quite an extensive range of printed viscose fabrics in all sorts of different prints, lots of bright and colourful ones, a whole range. I've sewn with a couple before and I find the fabrics to be really nice quality, really lovely quality viscose fabrics. They're lovely and soft and drapey, so nice to sew with and nice to wear too. And this fabric was gifted to me by Minerva in exchange for a blog post, 
which I'll be writing and popping up on their website once I finish this project. So once that's up on their website, I'll link it down below in case you fancy having a read of all the details. But this is the fabric. Its name is Python Pavement. I'll link it down below. And it's a bit different to my usual choice. Um, I've not got any sort of snake style prints in my wardrobe at all. So this is a little bit out of my comfort zone. But when I saw it on the Minerva website, there was just something about it that I quite liked um, and that sort of drew me to it. I think I quite like the sort of almost geometric style of the snake print with all the little squares on it. And I really like the tones in this fabric too. So the base colour is quite a soft, light grey colour. And then there are lots of different darker tones of grey and black on the fabric to make up the snake print. But also you might be able to see there's some little hints of a sort of softer pink fabric in there too, which I thought added a bit of a feminine touch and just made it almost glow a little bit. I thought that was quite pretty. And I quite like the cool tones. I had my colours done quite a long time ago and I'm um, a winter, I have winter sort of colour palette. So cooler tones seem to work well with me. Um, so I thought this fabric would look okay on my skin. And yeah, there's just something about it I liked. And I thought it'd be fun to go with something just a little bit different and have a bit of fun by choosing a print that's a bit out of my comfort zone, but I thought was quite funky. So yeah, this is a viscose. I'm looking forward to working with it. And I've got three metres of this, so quite a lot because I make a dress um, that is quite a fabric hungry dress, I guess. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to giving this dress a go. And it's this pattern here. So this, oh, <laughs> this is the Dovestone dress by um, Isoso Studios. So this is a new pattern to me, but also a new pattern company. And I think it's always fun to try out a new pattern company when the instructions are a bit different to what you're used to. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how I get on with this one. This is a dress that was released earlier this year. And I saw some beautiful versions that have been sewed up by pattern testers. I know um, Tamlin from Sewing the Tine that sewed up a gorgeous person. Also Alexis from My Sweet Sunshine, who's another um, lady I love to follow on Instagram. And so there are just a few beautiful versions that really caught my eye and I thought I'd love to give this dress a try. So it's not exactly an autumnal make, I guess. It's quite a summery one because it's quite a strappy dress, but it's just going to be a bit of a fun one, I think. And I'm hoping... And once I've made it, I could maybe even wear it out to like a fancier winter event because of the kind of cool tones. I think you could make it into a wintry one, maybe with like a black cardigan or a little black shawl on top. Or I could enjoy wearing it next summer. Um, fingers crossed if it all goes well. But yeah, I'll show you the line drawings of the dress so you can see it in a bit more detail. So here is the Dovestone dress. You can make it either a sort of knee length dress or a to the floor maxi length dress. And I'm going to go for the maxi length version. So that's why I've got the three metres of fabric. But it's quite fitted around the bust with this sort of pretty um, sort of neckline. And then it sort of flows out around the waist and hips down to the floor. And then what you do is you make this long tie and the tie can be tied around the dress in different ways to sort of cinch it in and give it a different look. So I really like the look of that. I do quite like the idea of pulling it in at the waist. So I'm looking forward to sort of sewing this one up and then seeing how it works once you do tie it all together. It's also got pockets, which is quite handy. I'll be adding those. Um, and yeah, and it's also got a front slit as well to make it a bit easier, I guess, to walk in it so it's a bit more flowy. So yeah, that is a Dovestone dress. I mean, in terms of sizing, it goes from a UK size 6 up to a UK size 34. And there were also two bust sizes built in, a B cup and a D cup. So I had a look, and I'm going to go for the B cup option. And I'm not sure if I'm going to go for a size 6 or an 8. I need to have a little bit more of a think on which one is going to be better for me and have a look at the finished garment measurements and make a decision on that. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to giving this one a go. So I've had a look through the pattern instruction booklet and all of the sort of um, instructions and the pictures look nice and clear. So I'm hoping it'll be a really fun sew. And I do love the challenge of trying a new pattern where you're not exactly sure how it's going to turn out in terms of the fit and how the instructions will come together. I do think it's quite a lot of fun and quite a different experience to you know, making a pattern you've made quite a few times before. So I'll let you know how I get on with this pattern. I'm hoping it'll be a nice match for this fabric. I know that um, Viscose is one of the fabrics that's recommended this pattern. I think it should make a nice flowy dress. Um, but yeah, it does need quite a lot of fabric. I've got three metres because um, the pattern pieces are quite long. I think you cut them as a full front pieces rather than like a bodice and a skirt. So it'd be interesting to see how it comes together. Um, I hope it will turn out nicely in this fabric. So that's my first plan, the Dovestone dress in this viscose chalet fabric. Um, it should just be a really fun one. I'm really looking forward to just taking my time and enjoying the process um, on this one and just seeing how it turns out because I haven't really made a lot of dresses like this before. 
Um, so yeah, something different for me and a different type of print too. So yeah, I will let you know and I'll report back uh, once I've started some sewing on this one. So the next sewing project that I've got planned for this autumn is actually using another fabric that came from Minerva, but this is one I bought, it wasn't gifted. And this is actually a fabric that I've used before for a couple of other sewing projects, but in different colourways. It's a fabric I really love. So this is the fabric here. I'll hold it up close so you can hopefully see the texture to it. It is a rib knit fabric. And this is the Meat Milk Derby Ribbed Tensile Jersey fabric. I think I've got that name right. I'll link it down below. It comes in quite a few colourways and I really love it. It's a really lovely, soft, drapey, um, stretchy, lovely rib knit fabric. So I have made a couple of things before. Um, the first thing I made out of this fabric was a Freya top by Till in the Buttons and I made it in the shell colourway. I'll try and find a picture of that and pop it up so you can see what it looks like. I always love getting that top out when the weather gets a bit cooler. I then went on to make a Deer and Doe Orage dress in the dark red colourway. So I'll put a picture up of that one too. So having sewn with and worn the fabric before, I know I really love it. It is a pricier fabric, but I find it such nice quality. Um, but yeah, I just couldn't resist getting another colourway to make a dress that I've had in mind I've wanted to make for a while. So I got this black colourway and that is my plan for this fabric, this dress. And actually it's a dress that's a little bit summery really. So not such an autumnal make, but it's one I've wanted for a while. I know I'm going to wear it. It's quite going to be hopefully quite a classic dress in the black. And I'm hoping, fingers crossed, often at the end of September, we get a bit of late September sunshine. So I might be able to get it out then if I can get it sewn up in time. And if we do, there's quite a lot of ifs there, but this dress is one I know I want in my wardrobe either way. So what I'd like to make is a dress using this pattern here. And it is the Zoe Tank and Dress Pattern by True Bias. This is a pattern by True Bias I really love. I think it's such a great um, pattern. I've made the vest top version before this one here with a v-neck and it's got its armbands and quite a fitted look. It's designed to be made yeah, in a sort of stretchy jersey fabric. Um, and I really enjoyed sewing up. I find it comes together really nicely. And actually the vest version of this, I made in scraps of this fabric too in the shell colourway. Um, so yeah, I've got a Freya top and a vest top version. I love them both. They both work well in different weathers. So yeah, this pattern has a good size range too. Um, there is, um, I've got the zero to 18 version here, as you can see, and there's also a 14 to 30 range version too. And what's also really cool about this pattern is that True Bias have also released a free add-on for different necklines. So you get the classic V neckline when you buy the pattern, but you can also download a few other options. There's a higher neckline and a square neckline, a sort of curved scoop neckline too, which I think is quite cool and makes it quite a versatile pattern. But what I'd like to try this time is the version I haven't tried before, which is the dress. So this dress is designed to be made as a maxi length dress. And it kind of is fitted around the bust and waist and then sort of flares out and it's quite loose and flowy at the bottom. And you cut it with two pieces, as you can see, um, unlike the vest top where you cut it as one piece. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to make a shorter version of this dress. So an above the knee length version. And I just thought it'd be something that I could use a lot in the summer. It's a gap I feel I have in my wardrobe. I've got quite a few lovely viscose dresses, which are lovely for swishing about in, but aren't so sort of practical for just kind of everyday life. I'm at the park, climbing about the place with my children and that sort of thing. But I thought if I made a sort of shorter version and a knit fabric, that'd be really practical and something that I'd really enjoy wearing. And I thought you can't go wrong with a little black summer dress. So that is what I want to make. And having made the tank version using this um, lovely fabric, I know it works really well for this pattern. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how it turns out as a longer dress version. So that is my plan. I need to kind of have a figure out of how to adjust the pattern because when I was looking at the pattern pieces, they have a curved bottom and obviously the bottom's a bit wider. And if I just chopped it off the pattern, I'd end up with a little, little less sort of flare at the bottom of the dress. So I made it shorter. So I might try and keep the whole width of the bottom of the pattern piece. I'm gonna take a chunk out the middle to shorten it and then just adjust the side seams. So I have the full flare. I'm not exactly sure. Yet, I need to figure that out, but this fabric is also pre-washed. Um, there was some nice weather last week, so I took the opportunity of popping this on the line because I didn't want to risk tumble drying it or anything. It's such a nice tensile fabric. I don't want to sort of spoil it. Um, it's one I try and take care of. So yeah, that is my plan for this fabric. I'm really looking forward to giving the Zoe dress a go. And because I'm making the short dress version, I didn't need quite as much fabric as I would have done for the full length version. So I can't remember how much I ordered, but 
I tried to order as little as possible because it is pricey so I'm hoping I'll be able to squeeze the pattern piece out of this um, and it'll come together nicely so that is my next plan and again I'll share how I get on in due course. So my next autumn sewing plan is actually using a piece of fabric that I've had for a while and it is a remnant piece left over from another project. I think I've mentioned a few times recently that I've been trying to reduce my fabric remnant stash because I think particularly when I first started sewing I used to overbuy fabric because I was really worried I wouldn't have enough so I'd overcompensate and buy too much and end up left with some quite decent sized pieces of fabric left over. And I've been trying to go through my fabric remnants and use them up and turn them into wearable garments rather than just having their fabric sitting around and not being used. So for smaller pieces, I've been making things like knickers. Um, but I found a few larger pieces that I thought I might be able to turn into other wearable garments. And this is one of those pieces that I'm hoping I can squeeze a top out of. So this is the fabric here. You can see, yeah, it's a remnant. It's got some jaggedy edges here. Um, it is a really lovely cotton jersey fabric that I bought a few years ago now. It's quite a cute one. It's got a leopard print, as you can see, with this sort of dark base. It's almost like a bluey grey colour. And then the leopard print has these little sparkly gold bits on, which I thought were really sweet and a bit different. So this is the remnant piece of fabric. As you can see, it's a bit of a funny shape. Um, I originally used this fabric to make a Kylo wrap dress or Kilo wrap dress by Named Clothing. I'll see if I can find a picture of that one and pop it up here. It feels like a bit of a dressy dress because of the kind of gold glitter. So it's one I might wear out for dinner or that sort of thing. But I was having a look and found this piece of fabric in my fabric suitcase and thought, actually, there might be just enough fabric here for me to squeeze out like a T-shirt or something that I could maybe wear more casually. So it had quite a different feel to it than the um, Kylo wrap dress I originally made. So I think there is probably enough fabric to make a t-shirt. If I make more of a fitted t-shirt, I don't think I'd have enough for more of like a loose oversized t-shirt like the Solar tee, which I do love um, that pattern. So I'm thinking for this fabric, I might turn it into a t-shirt using this pattern here, which is another of my favourites for kind of a kind of go-to simple t-shirt. It is the Agnes top pattern by Tilly and the Buttons. It's just quite a nice scoop neck top pattern. It's designed to be quite close fitting, so I'm hoping because the pattern piece is smaller with it being close fitting, I'll just be able to squeeze them out of this fabric. I'd like to probably make this version here, but I'll need to make it short sleeved because I definitely don't have enough fabric for the long sleeve version. So I need to get the pattern piece out and have a play with them on this fabric and see if I've got enough fabric. One thing I wasn't sure about was what neckline to go for, um, whether to go for the classic scoop neck like on the Agnes top or there is also I could maybe make more of a boat neck or sort of slash neck neckline like this one here. I've done that before a couple of times in Agnes and I quite like that too. So let me know what you think. I think I'm just planning to make it as a top that I could wear with a pair of jeans, um, just quite a relaxed fashion. I'm kind of tempted to go for the scoop neck because I haven't made that version recently. Um, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Um, and I'll have to keep my fingers crossed. I think I have enough fabric. I've got kind of like a long, narrow piece um, down, obviously down the edge of the fabric. So I think I can probably hopefully stack the pieces one on top of each other because there's quite a decent length um yeah hopefully i can squeeze out those pieces so it'd be nice to turn this into something because it's quite a decent piece of fabric it's quite a pretty print um and like i say if i make it into a t-shirt i'd be wearing it in a totally different situation to the dress that wouldn't feel like i've just got loads of things in the same print so yeah that is my plan for this one i think the color's quite pretty so yeah i'm looking forward to making that one but yeah let me know what you think of the neckline front and i think i'm gonna go for this pattern I've also got the Tabitha t-shirt pattern also by Tin and the Buttons from their Make It Simple book, which has more of a high neckline, but I somehow think this fabric feels a bit fancy, so it feels like a, a scoop or a slash neckline might suit it better, maybe, I don't know. Although I guess the Tabitha t neckline would make it a bit more casual, so maybe I should give that a go. I don't know. Let me know what you think, um, which pattern you go for, which neckline. Um, but yeah, it'd be nice to turn this into something rather than having it just sitting around in my suitcase. So that is all of my sewing plans for autumn that I've got to share in this video. I have got one other sewing project planned for over the next few weeks, but I'm going to be talking all about that in a separate video because it's part of a sewing challenge that's going on. So that video will be coming out um, in the near future, so keep an eye out for that one. But I hope you've enjoyed hearing all about my sewing plans for autumn. I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into all those projects and I'll let you know how I'm getting on with them all as I go along. I do love to have a bit of a list and a bit of a plan, so I'm looking forward to yeah, getting those garments all sewn up and hopefully they'll turn out well. 
So thank you very much for joining me for this video. I really appreciate you watching, liking and commenting. It's lovely to have you here on my channel, hopefully enjoying my videos and I'll hopefully see you for another video again soon. But in the meantime, I hope you have a really, really good week and thanks again for watching. Bye.